about a month ago, I had a dream involving Pope Francis set in my childhood home, although I was an adult in the dream. And this is very significant, not only on a personal level, but the dream had three levels to it, which is why it's taken me a while to follow it up, because I want to try to do it justice, although it's a huge topic. And when I don't do it justice, please forgive me, but understand where my heart is, is to try to reveal what I didn't know for 20 years of my life, that that was a false system with so much of it actually against the Word of God, the Holy Bible, that it's leading people down terrible paths and they don't know it. Until Roman Catholicism actually began being taught in English, no one had any clue because everything was in Latin until the 1960s. Hard to believe. And in history, when anyone dared to try to translate scripture into the native languages, they were crushed by the Roman Catholic Church. They wanted to guard, hold on to, have an iron grip on all of this. And there's so much I will say about why Roman Catholicism is dangerous, wrong, not of God, except for tiny pieces of it. And I really do pray people will come out of that system and read the Holy Bible, seeking God by the Holy Spirit. Ask for the Holy Spirit, read the Holy Bible, ask, pray to be guided into truth. Because anyone that's been indoctrinated in anything in the world or in religions long enough, you know, it's a battle to come out of it. It's like sludge and you're trying to come out. And we've all experienced that because this is the devil's world. We've all been deceived in just about everything until we come to a right understanding of the truth through the Word of God when we're led by the Holy Spirit and we follow. Seek and you will find. Ask and it shall be given to you. Knock and the door will be open. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. God will perfectly judge. It's all the motivations of our heart. And where our treasure is there also will our heart be. If we treasure knowing the Lord our God, you must love the Lord. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength, with all your mind, with all your being. You're going to follow this trajectory, and the Lord knows who's who. So this testimony is more just to say what I now know, having read the Word of God deeply for many years now and having the Holy Spirit's guidance. This is all Christ in me. It's not me. It's not me patting me on my back or pointing a finger. It's saying, wow, we've all been in the dark. And let's come into the light, which is Christ. You know, we've been in lies and deception. Let's come into the truth, which is Christ. So my dream had a personal level of a family that grew up in that system, what my dream meant. Then it's the whole thing of what the Roman Catholic institution is now that I know the truth. And this is out there for anyone to know. Of course, it's been told for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of what's wrong in Roman Catholicism. But then there's a third level, which I really want to start with, and I'll have to back it up with the other. But it's this, it's that we are in the end times, and we who are watching for the Lord and reading the Bible, we see the signs, we know it. It's now, it's not 25 years off even, it's, we're here. Well, one of the great, oh my goshes, was Roman Catholicism needed to have been established for such a time as this in particular. In particular, the office of Pope, needed to have been well established throughout history with this stature and power globally for such a time as this. Because the Pope is the false prophet of Revelation 13. He is the beast that looked like a lamb and spake as a dragon, who will lead many along with the Antichrist to damnation. Because those who are not of God will follow into damnation and won't know it. They'll be believing everything that Pope Francis and Barack Obama tell them about the world, about what's necessary, about what's good and right and decent and moral, and never mention that there's one way to the Father, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son. So the world that does not have the love of the truth in them, that does not desire to retain the knowledge of God, that has not the love of the Father in them, these are the children of disobedience, the children of their father, the devil. They will follow that white-clad, Pope and Barack Obama, charming, flattering, man of peace, let's love one another with no redemptive uh, understanding, because that's not who they are, of Christ, the only way to the Father, by his blood, that we can be washed clean of sin, spotless in the Father's eyes by his Son in us. 
So that was why the dream was so important to me. And I'll say it again now briefly what it was. And in other videos, I'll go into Roman Catholicism as an institution and talk more about the Pope throughout history. But it's that aha. Just as Esther in the Old Testament was raised up for such a time as then, such a time as this then, to save her people, the Pope, office of the Pope, and now Pope Francis specifically, was raised up for such a time as this, for that figure to exist and to be believed on more than Christ, more than the Word of God, the Holy Bible, so that those people will follow him. It's stunning. So briefly, my dream was that I was in my childhood home as an adult. In front of me was Pope Francis in his white frock. Behind him were people seated at my family kitchen table, but grayed out, dark gray. And I'm not saying they're damned. It wasn't black, but grayed out like this effect of the institutional teaching of Roman Catholicism could pretty much kill your faith, you know? Or you could have a seed of Christ planted in you because there's enough from Scripture to hear it enough, just enough, but not the torrent of light, not the torrent of truth of the Word of God to, to you know, blossom into the mustard tree, the hugest tree from the littlest seed. So they were mostly grayed out. And the only living color people around that table were a sister in Christ that I've met nine years ago. Living color, she came over to meet in the dream, I'll tell you. And my sister from childhood, a born-again Christian. So three born-again Christian former Catholics in my dream. And the Pope standing here in front of the table of the rest of the people. Off to the side separately um, was my brother looking out a window at the world, saying something about faith. And, uh, but just looking out at the world, and the world is of the devil, we know that. Um, but looking away from the Pope, which is a good thing, because I believe all of us loved Jesus when we were little. It's that then the world got a hold of us. And if they're not of Christ, that will be how it is. But if there's still hope for them, it's always my prayer for everybody in the world who can possibly come to the Lord and be saved to eternal life. But my brother is saying something about faith while he's looking at the world. So I don't know if he has faith in the world, faith in man, faith in nature, but I did say to him, do you have faith? Because we know without faith it is impossible to please God. But the Pope was holding my upper arms, looking right at me, saying, you need to say a Hail Mary. And I've been praying to the Lord for years, not only for boldness, yes, and that's been coming more and more, but boldness and the words in the moment, because my tendency is to be nice, sweet little me from my childhood, the youngest of five children, and you know, that's my pattern, I guess. But I need to be in the moment, bold, in truth, in love, for Christ. Well, in the dream, in the moment, the Lord, as he said, when you stand before magistrates and rulers and you know, leaders, he will give you the words, don't even think about it. That's why it was so important in the dream. Immediately, when he was asked me to say the Hail Mary, he started praying a Hail Mary. And I said, let go of me, you filthy sinner. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you, you repent. Because the Hail Mary is an idolatrous prayer to a woman, a human being, blessed among all women. Don't ever think I don't believe that with all my heart. I love Mary. I love Joseph. I can't wait to know them. But the Lord our God, He is God. We don't pray to anyone or anything apart from Almighty God our Father in the name of Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, and the only mediator between man and God. This is perfectly true. Christ Jesus is our advocate. There is no intercessor between us and the Father, only Jesus Christ. In His name, what we pray according to the Father's will will be heard and will be given. When we pray according to His will in the name of Jesus Christ, His Son, directly to the Father. So this is only one tiny example of where Catholicism goes this way, and that Mary worship, praying to Mary, putting people between us and the Father is systematic in that institution. But this is just one little example. When I wouldn't say it with him, and I rebuked him, his face dissolved and contorted, and my sister in Christ, my born-again sister here, came over and pried his hands off of my arms. So the Lord was showing me, even in a dream, that that boldness is coming more in the moment, powerfully, and that the other prayer I pray 
regularly as Lord, let me be no respecter of persons, as Almighty God is no respecter of persons, meaning he does not play favorites. His truth, his law, his will is perfect and perfectly applied to everybody, with the exception, of course, of his grace and mercy to forgive us legally, though, legally, by giving our sin to Christ. It got paid for. It had to be paid for. The wages of sin is death. And giving us his righteousness in this exchange that we could be washed by his blood that was paid for our sins. You know, it's perfect. So, his mercy and grace, we will praise him forevermore for that love. But his equal standing of all of us before him, until we have Christ in us, you know, then we're his children, we are all the same. And I need and I want and I pray never to be swayed by appearance, but only by the Spirit, you know, discerning the Spirit and the fruit of somebody according to the Holy Spirit in me and the Word of God in me, that I can stand strong. And I don't want an appearance or a worldly given stature or status to influence me because this is war. This is warfare for men's souls. War against Almighty God. They killed the Prince of Peace. They, they killed the Son of God, crucified him. They, the demonic realm, the spirit at work in the children of disobedience. This is our enemy. We pray for everyone to come to the light of Christ and be saved, but we will know them by their fruit by their word, by their deeds, their actions, whether they be of Christ. And to know that the Pope is not of Christ, that is the Antichrist spirit working in him, despite whatever he might look like to the world, it's like getting x-ray spirit vision, and I don't have it enough, and I continue to pray for it, but to look through the facade of anybody, and then in bold truth and love declare to an enemy, especially to others. Of course, we're still loving and kind and trying to bring along and teach, you know, teachers of the word in love and in truth. But where we know who we're dealing with, do not be cowed down by what the world might say, like the shock and, you know, the appalled looks of anybody who would hear me ever say such a thing to the Pope. Um, this is the thing I want to be strong against letting that influence me and knowing the truth, to be able to say such things, because it is the sword of the Spirit. That's our defensive weapon. The Word of God, the Holy Scripture, the Word of God in us, and the name of Jesus Christ on our lips. These are our weapons, and our defense, of course, are the Gospel, and His righteousness, and our faith, and this is how we walk in the world, you know, shielded and, and sheltered in the rock, in our strong tower or fortress, Christ. All right, so that's an introduction to what I'll be talking about some more. Very complicated, very big subject, but these were the personal levels and also the beginnings of, wow, it's that understanding the Pope for such a time as this had to have been established throughout history, and he's had very negative, that office and that institution, terribly, terribly egregious negative effects on billions of lives throughout history, both followers of the religion and those affected by it. But that's why vengeance is mine, says, saith the Lord. He's got it all worked out. He said, don't worry about what you see going on that's so awful. It's all accounted for. Nobody's getting away with anything except those so graciously forgiven by God when we come to faith in Christ. You know, that is his mercy. But everything else is accounted for. But the Pope throughout history did what he did, said blasphemous things against God in the place of God, standing in that temple saying almost that he is God, just as the Antichrist Obama has done and will do very subtly. The serpent is the most subtle of all the beasts of the field. Genesis tells us that it's always been that way, very slithery, slidey, subtle, you know, quietly saying things here, doing things there, and the Pope is the same way. So I'll go through all of that in the next video. Well, that's just a little topic. Um, all right, may we all abide in Christ, in truth, in love, boldly, teaching, preaching, proclaiming the things we know to be true from the Word of God and about these end times. Um, we continue to pray for all to come to the light of Christ, to be healed, restored, saved to eternal life. And we always pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters all around the world. It's coming here, just because it's not here, let's not forget 
People are suffering and dying for the name of Jesus Christ every day. They're being imprisoned. They're being beaten by just fellow citizens for the name of Christ. They're, they're being tortured and they're dying very awful deaths for the name of Jesus Christ. It is coming here. Let's remember them. And I always pray, I pray especially they be strengthened, never deny the name of Jesus Christ, that they be hidden, they be shielded, they be delivered, they be taken out, whatever God's will is to preserve them to eternal life. And whatever his purpose for them is physically in the world still, that it be done. And that's our, always our prayer, that his will be done on earth as in heaven. All right, thank you. God bless everybody in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.